Well guys, I did it again. I left my Fat Shark battery plugged in for days. Like this thing is dead. Dead dead. 0, 0.00 volts dead. I've never made a video on how to recover over discharged lipos, so here it is. A uh, few things I want to say before we start. Uh, first things first, this doesn't just apply to Fat Shark batteries. Uh, this applies to all lipo batteries, including the lipos that you use on your multi rotors. The next thing is, if you don't already know, if you over discharge lipo batteries, it does damage to the battery and it won't hold a charge as well as it used to ever again. Now, how much damage done is going to depend on how many times you have over discharged it and also how far you over discharge it. This is debatable, but I would say the absolute minimum voltage per cell. On lipos that you want that you want to go past is three volts per cell now I like to stop flying before that so for example you absolutely do not want to go past 9 volts on a 3s lipo and uh, 12 volts on a 4s but on my 4s batteries for example uh, I try to stop flying once I get to 13 volts because it, you'll notice it go it drains super quick between 12 and 13 volts so as soon as I get to 13 I stop now in this case, where I've gone down to 0, 0.00, that is, that's bad. That's real bad. Now you can recover it, but the damage done is going to be worse than, say, going to like 2.8 volts per cell or something like that. The third thing I need to say before we start. On my battery charger, I'll be using the nickel metal hydride setting. Hopefully your battery charger has this because this is a great thing to have for recovering lipos. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug this battery in. First you should know that uh, there actually is a kind of a way of testing how much damage has been done. Uh, so right here if we go to battery meter we will see that it is dead. Dead dead. But then again that's why I make my own Fat Shark batteries because I do this all the time. And this is just way cheaper uh, if I make them myself. But you can also go to uh, battery resistance and check the resistance. Uh, in simple terms, you want this number to be as low as possible. Just to give you a good example, this battery is brand spanking new. I haven't even used it yet. So let me go ahead and check what the resistance is on that one. See how low the numbers are? And we're at a total of 36. Another way of knowing if your battery has damage to it is uh, if you have not charged it in a while. So I, I actually charged this battery like a week ago. And the individual voltages for every cell is right on, like spot on each other. But the closer these numbers are to one another, the better. If you have a damaged LiPo, then uh, the cells actually don't damage at the same rate. So you'll notice that you'll have like one number here and then another cell will be a completely different number. It'll be like pretty far off and then another, you know, they're not going to be close to one another. All right, now what you've been waiting for, sorry for the wait, but uh, how do you recover it? The thing is with these battery chargers, you can't just go to uh, your LiPo settings and try to charge it. So I'm, I'm just going to set this down to one tenth of an amp and this battery is actually a two cell. So let's try to charge it and see what happens. See? Connection break. This is kind of a safety feature if you want to call it that and it's just not going to allow you to do that because I guess potentially it could be dangerous if you don't do this right, but that's why I'm here explaining to you how to do it. So it's not dangerous, um, but it's not going to let you. So we will just go over to nickel metal hydride because there is no quote unquote safety feature. So we will go to that and you want to set this as low as possible. So I'm just going to go all the way down to one tenth of an amp. That's the lowest I can go. and now it's charging. All right guys, I'm back. Uh, it's been about 15 minutes. Now my battery charger actually stopped at, I wanna say it was 5.2 volts, something like that. It didn't make it to three volts per cell 
and that's fine. So what we want to do now is switch over to LiPo because we should be above that minimum safety threshold if you want to call it that. Now me personally, technically, uh, these batteries that I'm using for these fat shot goggles are lithium ion batteries so I will be switching to that but you will be using LiPo. Now you don't want to continue charging at the normal charge rate that you usually use like a 1C rating definitely won't, don't want to go any higher than that because the voltage is still pretty low. When I am going to recommend doing and this is also debatable some guys charge faster than this but I continue charging at 0.1 amps or one tenth of an amp. Now if we look at the individual uh, voltage see we're not even above 3 yet. The thing is, the slower you charge this battery, the better it is for it, and uh, the better it will increase the lifespan, I guess. I mean, you've already decreased the lifespan from ever discharging it, but you don't want to hurt it even more. So, charge slow. The slower, the better. So, what I'm going to recommend now is just continue charging at a very slow rating until the voltage gets to about, I would say, maybe 3.5 volts per cell and then you can charge faster but I'm still not going to recommend charging at a 1C rating or anything like that I would just move it slightly higher alright now that I'm at 3 volts per cell I'm just going to stop it and I will increase it to 3 tenths of an amp And then I'll just continue, I'm just going to leave it just like that and finish the charge on 3 tenths of an amp. Now you can do whatever you want, I just, like I said, the slower you go, the better. That's going to do it guys, so if you have any questions, leave it for me in the comment box. Thanks for watching, take it easy, I'll see you next time.